If you have been asking if healing is real, stick around and find out that healing is for real. And we don't mean maybe. My name is Tony. And I am Zane. And we are two witnesses and representatives of the miraculous gospel of healing. Boom. Bam. I'm Tony Myers. And I'm Zinel Fuego on the mic. And we are back with the Gospel of Healing podcast. The Miraculous Gospel of Healing podcast. I'll put in that to Miraculous because the Miraculous, like it do exist today again. Did I <laughs> you know, emphasize the Miraculous Gospel of Healing podcast? So last episode, we actually spoke about both Holy Brother Tony and myself. We were pretty much identifying two things, right? The state of mind, the 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 we call it the level of mindfulness that you've been living in. And all that level of mindfulness has been framed and shaped in death. Right? And I added value to what he actually said by identifying that your gospel message has been off. Right? And if your gospel message off, and the gospel message is what saves you, then, then your will off. <laughs> your whole universe off. Right? And the second thing that he adequately pointed out, Holy Brother Tony adequately pointed out, is what you have actually been feeding your awareness. Right? People, you know, we always speak about sowing and reaping. You, know? you want to sow the right thing, the reap the right thing, but it's unheard of amongst the circle of believers that heaven and earth came out of Jesus' spirit in you. Which means if sowing and reaping were came out there, then it is working in here. <laughs> and therefore, We're the awareness of talking about storming the gates of heaven. For real. <laughs> <laughs> For real. For real. Yeah, a, a paradigm that's like it's very imaginary. <laughs> and you ever notice, I mean, I don't mean to bash it, but you ever notice, right, how the paradigm of the Christian community and I say this with the utmost respect, but it is a fact. That if you really look around, is the Christian community seems to, to gravitate towards conspiracy theories very, very easily. Anything because, that engages vain imagination watch me. Is, <laughs> is what attracts the my the the awareness of death for real that's so true because the, the, the message is all surrounding that and so anything that is actually about that they gravitate towards it and they are the preachers of the conspiracy that is why the things such as the devil satan all that it is so alluring because it's vain imagination yeah and I so it that. grabs a hold and while we're there let's let's look at what paul says hmm. and paul makes the statement that the carnal mind is at enmity towards the things of god neither can understand the things of God, nor are subject to hmm. the law of God. Wait. Now, the law of God is the life giver. Right, right. The carnal mind is the brain. You have got the mind, which is spirit. You have mm -hmm. got the brain, which is a physical organ. Right. In between is your soul, where you have a choice. Mm. You can choose to be guided by the mind, spirit, or by the brain, the physical senses. 
Right. One leads to life. One leads to death. Hmm. Can you take a guess which one is which? Hmm. So when you're being guided by what is being put into you from the outside world, that is always the paradigm of death. Yeah, all the external compulsions. And when that's you're where all guided it. from the spirit, the mind, that is always life. Yeah. And just by that comparison that you just gave there, any believer could just stop and now identify what fruit is your belief system carrying, what hope, what expectation. Now, when I say expectation, let me just make this very clear because these terms seem to be so abstractly defined. <laughs> it's so abstractly defined that you're using it and um, causing harm to yourself and don't even realize. Expectation of death is called fear. Mm -hmm. Expectation of life is called faith. Right? You could take that and switch it. If you actually have fear of death, you can also say that you have faith of death. Mm -hmm. You can also switch the faith of life and say it's fear of life because you're actually giving it reverence. Right? Both as expectation. So you really and truly need to ask yourself is, where have you been living? Because if, according to what Holy Brother Tony just mentioned, and we use that as a yardstick, was a gauge, then we can clearly identify that if you have been actually living with fear of sickness, of getting worse, of death, of the grave, then you are clearly, very clearly, living in what we call the carnal mind, in the carnal mindset. If you've actually been living and you get up every morning and you expect, you have high life expectancy, then you know you have been living from the mind of the spirit, the spiritual mindset. So you, this, is, this, is, this is basically us here really coming and actually bringing it, putting it on the table, resting it out on the table, and seeing it's time for you to choose. You need to make a decision. And as we said, yes, it starts with which gospel you're listening to. Because if you listen to the gospel that tells you death is in front of you, it's logical for you to fear death. If you listen to the gospel that tells you that, that death is behind you, then it's illogical to fear death. <laughs> if it's behind me, what do I have to fear? Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And the writer of Hebrews in chapter 2 makes it very clear that this was the purpose of Jesus on the cross to put to death the fear of death. And the when devil... you read scriptures with death behind, life in front, then that's what you will see. Too yeah. many people, because of the wrong foundation of the wrong gospel, too many people see that death is right in front of you and somehow you've got to avoid it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so you're looking for anybody because, because you're living in death, you're looking for the person who's living in life. You're pursuing them. And I ain't saying don't ask for prayer and don't look for prayer. What I'm saying is if you're pursuing somebody to actually give you life, then I need to, to wake up to the fact that you are living in death. You are living in the identity of death. Death is not a thing. Death is an identity. It's a psychology. It's a way of thinking. It's a paradigm. It's a perception. It's a perception. It's a mindfulness. It's an awareness. And a perspective. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. Right? So we basically need to start making a, dis a differentiation to draw the line in the sun. If you really want to get healed and live in healing, because it is one thing to get healing. It's another thing to sustain a life in healing. 
or else you're going to actually be looking or else you're going to have to um i mean i'm saying this in, in jest and in joke right but i need to get it to get to, um, to get the point across if you don't make this decision then you're going to have to find somebody like holy brother tony or somebody like myself and pay us very highly to keep us on speed dial <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? No, I'm not saying that we're charging for that, but get my point. That you're going to have to get somebody with life to be your contact to keep you alive. Mm -hmm. When Jesus' gospel is his spirit in you, is what's supposed to keep you living for thousands of years. I want to give. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just have to say, my favorite scripture, Romans 8 11. My mm. paraphrase. Right. The, the spirit is giving life to my body. That is a continual ongoing process. Are we back? I think we are. Yeah. So, Romans 8.11. 8, 11. And my paraphrase right. is the Holy Spirit is giving life to my body. That is mm -hmm. a continual, ongoing, never-ending thing. Yeah. Never-ending re reproduction of life. The only time I think in terms of death is when I'm teaching to mm. try to explain what not to do. What not to do, yeah. yeah. My focus is on life. We are not to be, you know, we stated this in the last episode that we are to lose all consciousness of sin, of death. Yeah. They go hand in hand. And I've got news for people. As a Gentile, Jesus did not come to take your individual sin away. You never had individual sin. Well said. Very well said. Very well said. You never had individual sin. <laughs> Only the law made sin an individual thing. And that was because the children of Israel demanded it. Mm -hmm. They demanded the law. God did not impose the law upon them. And they Mo demanded the law. They Mo said, Moses, you go and you speak for us. Right. And, and, by and the we way, will do as you say. The Apostle Paul made it explicitly clear. You see what you just said there? You? <laughs> you see what you just said there? Listen to me. Holy brother, you are probably one in our persons that can count on one hand that really understand that there's a difference between the sin and even Paul explains it, but it is outside of the mindset of the Christian community to understand that nobody watching this ever sinned. It was the first man that made the decision and it was inherited. That perspective, that paradigm, that identity, that spiritual posture was inherited. And the only time people were actually counted with individual sin was because they were under law that brought them into individual responsibility. From the time that law was removed, Nobody else had sin, and no Gentile was under the law. Exactly. So right now, the problem was never an individual problem. It was a species problem. Preach it, bro. <laughs> it was, and since Jesus came and nailed the species to the cross and resurrected as the first man of the species in the same way everybody inherited death, in the same way everybody has inherited life 
when they identify themselves with the Jesus species. The gospel is not about the individual. It's about the death and, re and birth. You got the death of one species with the re rebirth into a complete new species. Completely new species. That species died, and this one is now born. Jesus, a new species. Jesus gave himself not to appease God, but actually to appease man. Hmm. Hmm. Gave himself not when it comes to the Gentiles, not for individual sin at all. We there could not be a new species without everybody being brought together. Exactly. As exactly. long as they were under the covenant of man, there was Moses, a separation. Yeah. They yeah. were separated. The Jews and the Gentiles were forever separated until that was fulfilled. That is what Jesus did. He took on the individual sins of those who had agreed to that covenant. Right. The Jews in the, in the whole aspect of it he is taking care of the original sin. Now the the what do you want to call it? The uh, the wall that separated the Jews from the Gentiles is now taken care of. Now we become one species. One one again. Brand new species. <laughs> Are, are are we all with me? Which man? <laughs> I tell you that I am actually telling you that there is not. I cannot count the amount of persons. They are not more than the five fingers on my one hand that understand what you just said. That this is a species problem, and therefore Christians in particular have been duped into thinking that God is micromanaging their life when God is actually watching this as a species. And so because it's a species, what is good for Jesus is good for the species. What good for, for the species is good for Jesus. <laughs> hey, this is Tony Myers. You may have noticed that this episode seemed to end abruptly. Well, it did because we were having internet problems. And then both Zane and I agreed we'd stop it off there where we were talking about the children of Israel and the true gospel. That we'd stop it right there. And in the next episode, we'll pick it up where we left off. So that's the reason as seems to end abruptly. Thank you all for your patience and understanding. Check out next week's episode. Woo! Some deep stuff here. Be blessed. Be healed. And be a blessing. We hope that you've learned from this teaching. Now, subscribe. If you're listening through YouTube, subscribe to the Miraculous Gospel of Healing, the YouTube channel. If you're listening on a podcast, whatever platform you're on, whether it be Apple or um, whichever one that you're on, Spotify, subscribe to our podcast that way you know and you don't miss an episode and we have some good episodes be blessed be healed be a blessing